Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with Casper C. Sloa. That is a very awesome name. Uh, we were actually talking about it, about the importance of names. And I was like, I, I got to get this one because it's a cool name. So Casper, uh, we were actually, folks, just so you guys are aware, me and Casper actually tried to get this recording done previously. Both of us had a heck of a week, uh, let me tell you. Um, Casper, unfortunately, witnessed somebody get hit by a car. My daughter, unfortunately, had a bad tooth, had to get to a dentist. So it's it's been a heck of a week. But I think that is uh, that's kind of par for the course for entrepreneurship, to be honest with you. So Casper, go ahead and introduce yourself. Who is Casper? Yeah, that I guess that that's that's managing through every every day and trying still to 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 build build something and then have to do it yeah late at night or or later so yes uh, thank you for having me um, I'm here in not so sunny Copenhagen right now because it's it's kind of late it's uh, nine o'clock uh, p.m. here now. Um, and of course, the guy uh, yesterday when we were supposed to have our talk was hit by by a car when he was on his bike. So, I mean, the yeah, all your assumptions about Copenhagen and people running on bikes, <laughs> drunks, is, is true. Just all uh, one big yeah, uh, one bug ball right there. <laughs> um, so I work with uh, creativity and in-house marketing. I guess that's the the, the, the main topics that, that I want to talk about. Um, but apart from that, I've been involved in in a billion things, all kind of centered around marketing or in house or creativity. So, so, so for the last, I guess, almost thirty years now, which of course you can't see on me, I'm I look much younger. <laughs> I was gonna say you don't look a day over twenty two. <laughs> no. Yeah, I feel like it. So, tell us a little bit about you know. First, give us give us a little intro. What what is in in your perspective? What is in house marketing? What what is it? So basically, it's it's uh, if you're in a, I would say not even yeah even small company. It's bringing those uh, those skills and and uh, and assets uh, closer to the core business, so you can react more agile. Oh, I hate that word, but more faster and turn things around. And you have product knowledge within reach so you don't have to start over with with uh, external agencies all the time and and from my concern it comes from i would say 10 15 years ago when i joined a, a company called Maersk, which you probably know which like a big logistics shipping company uh as head of creative and i realized that we were doing a lot of the same things in the different markets so I suggested that we brought some skills in, hired some people to do it, and and manage this across uh, the organization from from within. And then yeah, I did that. I built an in-house agency there for a couple of years, um, and then moved to another company in a in a similar role. And I was planning not to do it again because it's it took all my time to do it so i just wanted to go back and do a bit of creative work but not have anything in house and i realized that the the troubles was all the same in the new company even though the business and and the what do you say the yeah the line of business was totally different it was a financial uh, uh tech company but the problems were all the same in terms of translation and versioning and scalability of of your business so so that's kind of what I ended up doing. And I, I did that for yeah, for for the bank or the fintech company and later on for a Danish jewelry brand. So it's it's been a lot of different lines of business, but the problems and the processes actually was the same. So that kind of ended up leading me towards in-house. And then I had a lot of creative people coming in, and I realized that they were how to say this nice but sometimes losing the edge when they were in-house because you're in this echo chamber of of things so that's how i i ended up trying to to focus creativity back and bring that creativity back to 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 the people i had hired and then i realized it was a problem that a lot of other companies had as well so so that ended up being what we do now which is called site a company that helps companies build in-house agencies and bring creativity in-house long story but uh that's kind of how, oh, yeah. how i ended up here 
And, and yeah. I, I, folks, I, I, so I think this is important because I, I do believe, you know, to your point, um, Casper, I, I believe that a lot of the organizations are starting to move to this uh, kind of in-house, especially since the pandemic, I think um, the, the ability to have remote workers makes it easier to bring in. Now, now so folks, when we're talking about in-house, we're essentially meaning individuals that are employed by the organization doing that specific task. Uh, so marketing, sales, IT, right? All these different yeah. things. But, you know, in fact, I mentioned operations. I think one thing people probably fail to see is the, the amount of operations that actually goes behind marketing and creating an in-house, you know, creative group. Can you tell us, give us, give us some insight of what, what does that all take? Well, so of course it depends on what you do, but, but a lot of times you, 20 years ago, you would do uh, a TV commercial and that's pretty much it. Maybe you do a print ad, but that was it. You had to do produce, that's kind of two assets. Today you have uh, you have what we call wear out of that TV see the TV spot within weeks and you have to do something different for all the different uh, social media channels like uh, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and so on and you have to pr produce different content in different ways for all that. So it takes a lot more. It, it demands a lot more uh, different assets and so on. And when you go to external agencies for that, the cost just explodes. So, and 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 to your point, it for me the in-house is a is a proper uh, term because, yeah, with uh, workers uh, you can have remote or hybrid and something like that. You can even have something they're not really hired by you, but you still control them in a in a different way. So you don't go to external agencies or companies all the time sometimes you go directly to film production companies and they produce the the film closer to home so you're you're more bringing in the 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 ownership of the creativity and the different layers of marketing and a few years back at least here in europe and uk you would more have like the strategic planning in-house. So you would kind of know where to go, but you would go external for all the, the different roles. And what we can see now, and we're actually doing uh, a report. I just have one here every year called the in-house barometer, where we survey around I, this time, I think it's like, uh, more than a thousand people from in Europe, the UK and the US as well uh, and Canada. Uh, and we can see that more and more company are bring, companies are bringing uh, these creative people in-house. They are still buying things outside the organization, but but it's just to have that creative control because now you have a, a lot of different companies that do, we do only uh, search engine optimization, only do digital advertising, only do this and that. So in, in, in order to have control and of the, of the, the creativity of the assets, you you bring in people that can kind of master that hustle from from within. Long story, sorry, I, I keep rambling. No, on no, it. it's it's, <laughs> a, it's really important. And in fact, I think again, like I, I mentioned, I think more and more uh, organizations are kind of going to this route. And you know, Casper, you mentioned it too, the strategic planning. It's really important to involve your marketing team within your strategic planning because it's imperative to understand. So if you're creating some a sales funnel or a marketing funnel or, you know, however you're going to be tracking essentially your consumers, it's really important for your marketing team to know what marketing assets they should be actually implementing during each stage. Uh, as Casper mentioned, there are so many different marketing avenues now. You have the website, you have your emails, you have newsletters. That's not even getting into all the social media channels and then the you know, the print ads and, and newspapers and, and news article or news stations, right? And, and things of that nature. And so it's really important for you to understand what message you're going at with each one of your channels. And in order for you to understand that messaging, you kind of need to know what consumer is on each one of those channels and how are they absorbing the information that you're actually disseminating and what, how do they, you know, what do they find valuable? Um, the, the unique thing I'm starting to find out with marketing is that our attention spans folks is, is, completely, completely disintegrated. Uh, I mean, you know, commercial previously, it was like, well, a minute, 30 seconds, maybe two minutes. Now, 
if you don't get your message across within like that first, you know, 15 or 20 seconds, because of the way the reels are kind of created on social media, you, you're, you're gone. You're they're They're scrolling up and they're going to the next reel. Uh, so if you don't, if you're not able to kind of, you know, create your elevator pitch or your value proposition within like you know, that first five seconds, you kind of lose the audience pretty quickly. It seems like. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you scroll something like the height of the Statue of Liberty every day uh, on your phone. And that's just the average. Uh, my mom scrolls less. So some of us will <laughs> scroll more. Um, and and in, yeah, you, and, and you need to have that, you know, brand connection. So everybody will, will realize it's you within that those first two seconds or something like that. And that kind of uh, having people being able to I think you have the Coca-Cola statement at one point. People say, I want a bottle that's so uh, distinct that everybody can recognize it, even only in the touching in the dark or uh, laying broken on the floor or something like that. And it's kind of the same thing you want with your, your brand, your marketing. So even if you only see one or two seconds, you want to grab people's attention and you want them to know that it's got something that's you-ish, right? So when they get an email or they just bike by uh, an outdoor on the on the side of the road or or something like that you want them to, you have want to have a connection but still something that fits that media um and that's i mean that's the the difficult part but it's also the fun part of it yeah it, I will, i'll admit it's a difficult part and to the point i'm starting to think about so folks that listening if you're if you're attending portland state university this year i think i'm going to reach out to your folks the capstone team and see who wants to help me scale this business so and folks that are listening if you have a business and you need help scaling a really good free option is actually reaching out to a local university seeing if they're they're um their seniors are you know they're taking on capstone projects if they have something that aligns with your or your industry and they can learn from you uh this is a good opportunity for you to you know cast your net out and, and try to capture them now now casper let's let's go back to the in-house marketing let's talk about the pros and cons uh for an, an organization or even a small business uh let's, let's actually specifically talk about entrepreneurs small businesses you know startups what are the pros and cons of them bringing in in-house marketing or any type of in-house services so both the pros and cons is actually the cost uh so so, so that's kind of funny because of course you can save a lot of money by bringing some jack of all trades in-house but that's also the downfall of it right you I mean you could you 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 have jack of all trades have to do a bit of everything um and sometimes it's easier to buy those small those hours uh, outside so 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 cost is one of them that goes uh, both uh pros and cons and then of course uh on the on the pro side you have the the control uh, and you probably also have the agility on the on the con side i mean your in-house team can only do so much at the same time so so if you're if you want to do everything and that's one of the things i i'm part of a, a few small entrepreneurships uh digits I, I wouldn't call them startups anymore we've been going on for a couple of years but <laughs> but it's a three, four, five man team. And, and, and of course, in the beginning, you want to do everything. You want to be on all the channels and you want to send out emails and you want to build your email list and you want to be on Facebook and you, and you just realize that you're spreading yourself too thin, both uh, in terms of, of spent. So it, it costs, of course, you can do something organically or for free, but but then people won't see it. So you have to put a bit of money behind everything. It's, it's a, you pay for attention, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's one of the, the things that you realize pretty soon when you try to build marketing from, from within, there are a few things I would say tricks in terms of, of, of doing something that actually stands out. But, but, but that's, um, I think that's the, 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 both the pros and cons actually that you, you, you can, you get the control, but you also realize how difficult it is to manage everything at the same time with a small team, sometimes just one person also doing sales and follow-ups and so on. So, Yeah, folks, I got to tell you a great example right now is this podcast. I'm the, I'm a one man show, right? And, uh, <laughs> you know, when you're looking at the social media channels, TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, um, you know, all these different 
sites. Uh, I was really, to Casper's point, kind of spreading myself too thin. And I got to tell you, folks, that's why you haven't seen me engaging in, in TikTok recently. Not that I don't like the, the platform. It's a great platform. I just wasn't getting, it didn't seem like at the time, the reels, the, the content I was posting on there. I mean, there would be days I'd get like 1,100 views and the next day I'd get three. So I'm, I don't know what the heck the algorithm was doing. I was working, you know, working for it for months. But uh, one thing I have noticed is my biggest, actually one of my most uh, engaging audience is actually LinkedIn. And, and again, I think it goes back to the content that I'm producing. It's really educational, focused on, you know, business. And where do those people tend to be? Tend to be utilizing the LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn's uh, social media platform. So again, understanding, you know, what, what your consumer wants, what's valuable to them, and then understanding where they're at is really important, you know, uh, and, and building that business. Now, now, um, Casper, you kind of mentioned you're, you're, they're one of five, you're kind of doing this. In fact, you want one stat you mentioned earlier, which kind of blew my mind, is on average individuals re- scroll, you said about the size of an empire state building? Yeah, I think it, so you don't use the metric system. So but uh, I think it, it's like 90 meters high. Uh, and, and I think that's pretty much the, 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 the same uh, as, as the average uh, scroll on on social media uh, platforms. So it's just to have an example. Sometimes it's, it's easier to understand, wow, that's crazy. If I had to do like yeah. this for the entire statue, <laughs> including the, uh, the foundation, actually. Um, so that is remarkable. Yeah, that's that's uh that's a lot and then you have to remember you do that at this i mean we're not only consuming one channel at the time i i I have kids and they you know they watch tv have an ipad over here we're showing something at the same time as they're on their phone it's changing now but but i mean we're still on on several platforms at the same time while listening to music right so you have to do something that catch attention maybe they have the sounds turned off or maybe there's something else that's i mean it's it's a hard job to to catch uh, the attention there it really is and you know i again i you know growing up i would say i would do most of my work listening to music like i had i needed that distraction Granted, I came to found out that was, you know, a completely set of different, you know, ADHD issues. But nonetheless, you know, people do have multiple, uh, especially now where we're constantly being asked to divide our attention with so many things. I mean, if you drive down the street right now, folks, uh, the amount of things you will see from an advertising perspective, from a from a marketing, from a sales, um, it's it's constant. You know, it's constant. And so it's, it's very unique. Now, Casper, you mentioned you, you're about you're about four or five members on your team. Can you tell us kind of how did you guys start? How did you guys meet and how did you guys start to build this uh, this organization? Yeah, so uh, I'll I'll take the, the small the startup first, because that's actually kind of fun. So I was that was kind of after Maersk. So going from something big and, and after the bigger corporations and then I was starting up my small company. Uh, which was just me helping companies build this in-house, and a uh, and a friend of mine reached out and say, you know, I'll know you 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 do that, but but couldn't you help us at the same time just do marketing, not that in-house stuff, just help us because. Um, so he's an engineer. He used to work for Intel. Um, he's British but lives in 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 Denmark, um, and he developed some kind of educational system where you could simulate how trees would grow depending on how fast they grow, uh, the amount of sunlight available and rain. So basically a kind of simulation, if you have a fast growing tree that doesn't meet a lot of sun or something. And he showed that in some kind of forum to a biology teaching thing. And this biology teacher was actually a PhD uh, the doctor from uh, Chicago who said, oh, that's really nice, but I have something else we need to do. And um, so so he comes from, from Chicago and he, he said, you know, I've been struggling teaching my kids to work with data and science. Uh, every year I want to I wanna go out in the field and I want to collect a lot of uh, samples and do, do, do science. Uh, and then we go back and then I have to, to spend two months teaching them Excel. I just want some kind of tool where we can. I'm not. I'm not selling it. Sorry, it's not a. It's not a pitch. Oh, sell I want it, some kind of it, some kind of mean, tools where, where, where people listening. can can plot in their data and they can do all the statistical analysis and they can understand it within 
you know, from from uh, sixth grade and up to university level. I just want something that you know it can do all the bells and whistles and so on, but but really really simple, so they can do science and not focus on learning Excel or, or computing or something like that. And then they kind of built a very simple version of that because they are they are skilled and they knew what they want to do, and they were I think one year in or something like that. And we just and I just sat down and said, oh, this is fun, so let's do something, you know. And I wanted to do. They, they liked all my ideas, and that's kind of how to get me tricked in. So I said, <laughs> well, let's do let's do funny funny headlines like uh, headlines like uh, um, uh, you a classroom full of kids who love st the statistics. What are the odds or something like that? So so playing around <laughs> with words. Oh man, the dad joke in me is just love and yeah, laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so that's kind of uh, how we ended up. We didn't have any money, so I ended up doing a lot of illustrations, which kind of ended up being our our style now. So, uh, so that's what we do. And then we we actually in the beginning we tried to do a lot of different content uh, on all platforms and try to show the platform. And then we realized that you know the best way to to, to teach something like this is by letting people in and let them try. And instead of having people go out and collect data, what about we found some kind of data sets uh, that we, you know, prepared within the, the, the app, the platform, uh, so people could play around with it. So, so that's kind of how that started. We, we made something that we now, I think we call it classroom ready. Now it, it was called ready to teach in the beginning. Somebody else had that name. So now it's classroom ready. And that could be anything from what are we eating on Thanksgiving to, uh, how is, uh, Taylor Swift and, and now my, uh, uh, in, are they engaged, engaged or, uh, or yeah. just, uh, I don't know. Uh, I ask my wife about that one. I'm sure she'll, know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> performing on, um, oh, shit, I'm, I'm, Falling out now because I don't know a lot about American football. I don't know anything about called. Taylor Swift, so you're fine. All <laughs> okay. you can know is that the Raiders are the best team in American football. If you just, I, I can see you that. Just remember yeah. that, and you're going to be great. <laughs> oh, they, were, they, they were the best when I was in school as well. There you go. So it could be anything. It could be a, uh, racial profiling uh, or something like that. We just took the data in and we made it. I would say <laughs> that was a weird word to use, but fun to play around with. Say, you know, how how what what are the ethnicity of people when you're stopping them, depending on how much light of day you have, or it could be global warming. And when uh, COVID hit, we actually also did how is it spreading, things. Uh, so 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 that's kind of how we ended up doing that. And I think now we are. Now we have five people, and I'm not that involved. I still do the illustrations and some headlines once in a while, but but it's more like in a bulk, and I'm sending it over. I still haven't met Aaron. He still lives in in, in Charlottesville, uh, so I don't know how he looks from 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 the <laughs> chest down. <laughs> um, but 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 that's that's kind of the funny story of of how we're connected now. And if you really bond, uh, yeah, like this, you could you could you could still work a lot. Uh, um, spending time here and and punching ideas like that, so it's not like um, um, like you need to be in the same room uh, and 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 have a startup or entrepreneurship or like that. So that's uh, kind of the story of that. And and the other company is, of course, what I do for for a living now, which is helping companies build in house agencies. But I think the other one is a more more fun story. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's interesting. I think are you brought up a great point, Casper. It's, it's, you don't necessarily have to be in the same room to create something, folks. You know, uh, we're running, you know, I've, I've talked about this pretty consistently. I have the co-founder and president of the nonprofit Latino Founders. We run in a business accelerator. It's a, it's a 10 week business agnostic accelerator. So business agnostic essentially means we bring in businesses from all different markets. Uh, and the reason we've done this specifically is because we didn't want to, we read from the Harvest Business Review, uh, the importance of actually creating diversity in your accelerator because it removes competition. So for example, if you're you're just focusing on clean energy. Well, a lot of these individuals have intellectual property, right? And, and they don't want to be sharing some of those trade secrets during an accelerator. So then the innovation and growth kind of kind of stalls a little bit, right? But, yeah. but the beauty of it, it could be done. We're, all of this is done virtually, 
right? We're doing this accelerator virtually. Now we will have a showcase. So uh, stay tuned. In fact, subscribe to the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter for more information on that. But we will have a showcase for these entrepreneurs to be able to show off their wares. But, but the beauty of it, again, you don't need a physical space to create something, right? Uh, and, and, and I think that's the beauty of marketing. Yeah, yeah, and it is, it is. So, so, so if you if you if you align on the idea and maybe uh, what we call the tone of voice, so how you can express yourself, and, and and you don't have to write it down in a fancy document. It's more like you know, this is how we talk to our customers. This is who we are, and so on. Then you can you can bring in people from from all over the world, and you can and you can do this together by by sharing ideas and even ownership of some of these things so so i think that's uh yeah that's that's really really fun yeah and, and i think too what uh, that in-house it kind of creates the culture you know culture eats strategy for breakfast folks and so it's imperative that you have you know the right people on the bus uh and and when you're building your brand you're you know once you kind of gotten to a point where you're probably doing in-house you probably have a pretty good brand guideline right where you're you certain fonts certain colors certain certain sizes and all these things uh, but you also need the passion behind it. So you want the people that are really well working the marketing, um, you know, to really have the passion and understand the market. You know, Casper, like you mentioned uh, with the statistics, you know, what are the odds? You know, I think that was, that's a, that's a great example. Yeah. And I think, and then you need, uh, I think what's important uh, is that kind of founder story. So when people say, why you, um, yeah. So, so here we got this uh, biology professor who has been doing TED Talks, but also living in a swamp, <laughs> collecting uh, animals and marking them for weeks. So his story is all about, you know, the science, the teaching and, you know, the problem with getting people to be engaged in science. And then on the other hand, that's, uh, it's not me, it's like Dan, the, the other founder saying, then we built it, you know. And and because they worked so close together and say I need this and he said okay like this no more like that you 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 have that story uh, that you you know this is why we did it and nobody else did it so you're not just an engineer <laughs> I mean so Aaron who was the the the, the founder the professor he couldn't build it himself but he has the story of why it's done because otherwise I mean. Me and, and Dan, the, the engineer, we're just a programmers. We're just, we're just, you know, making it happen. But we're not really the story behind it. So, so I think having that story that says this is why we were able to do it is is really important when you're a small startup or entrepreneur. This is this is a in fact something I coach individuals, uh, startups and entrepreneurs when they're doing a pitch. When you're doing a pitch uh, or you're building a, a deck, you know, for venture capitalists. It's really important before we even get into your finances, before you get into the actual organization, I want to know about you. Because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to invest in your operations and your, your finances and see your trajectory. But also, more importantly, like 80% is being actually invested into the entrepreneur. Because when you have a passion for something, when you truly have a passion for something and you uh, entrepreneurs, me and Casper are talking about this. You're going to have long days. There are going to be nights when you're by yourself. There are going to be difficult times. And it's the passion that you have for what you do that's going to get you through those moments. And if you do not have a passion for it, if your goal is just money, you're going to crash and burn pretty fast because your money crashes and burns pretty fast during the entrepreneurship world. Hell, I've lost a shit ton of money in entrepreneurship, right? But I've also done very successfully in other ventures. So it's it's... You have to understand, like, if you you really have to have a passion for what you're doing and then bring in folks that, again, that are going to be able to, uh, like Casper said, identify where your weaknesses are and bring in somebody to kind of help complement those. You know, I might not be the best marketer. I might not be the best salesperson. Okay, well, let's go out and, uh, you know, hire folks to bring them in. Uh, but, you know, as, fo as, as opposed to doing it in a, on a, you know, contract level, bring them in in-house teach them what you're doing, have them really get engaged about your brand and what you're doing. And, and the next thing you know, you know, you have a yeah. really good client, you know? Yeah. And then I think it, it, a lot of it is also about, and now we're getting kind of, maybe it's 
on purpose. Getting back to to to, to, to it's also about the storytelling. Are people? I mean, when you tell us a, a story, it kind of goes under the radar. Uh, people say, "Oh, yeah, that guy who 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 used to teach in, a, in an elementary school outside Chicago, uh, but he couldn't get the kids to understand science." You know, people say, "Oh, I understand that." Instead of you know coming up with the statistics and numbers and so on that that we really don't you know grasp. So 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 figure out your 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 story, your storytelling on on how that uh and how how you why why you did this basically and tell that story and 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 tell it too many times i mean yep w- 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 i had a i wouldn't say funny story but i mean i had people i've been working with on other occasions uh, we've been meeting for coffees and so on for the last 5 years uh i've written books about this i've been talking on on a lot of things and and she said you know one time i in our i don't know 10th meeting after in 5 years or something like that so tell me again what is it that you do and and I thought I was like almost you know sometimes you know slowing up in, of, of telling the same thing all over again and say okay I'm gonna change something now I, I I'm I'm getting sick of saying the same you know jokes or tell the same story just remember that that you are the one hearing them all the time people are not you know they don't really care right so 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 tell that story again and again and again and again and what what you do and why you're doing that and so on so. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. And and, and more important, like yeah, I think there's this biz, big misconception from entrepreneurs that they don't want to share their thoughts and ideas because somebody's going to take it. Folks, I got to tell you right now, if if somebody's out there and they have the same exact uh, business idea as you do, uh, the only difference between you and them is they're going to do it or you're going to do it. You know, that's, yeah. that's truly it. Who's going to actually start the LLC? Who's actually going to make a hire? Who's actually going to bring in people? Uh, that That's really important. Now, now, Casper, one of the things I also, you were kind of talking about briefly is, is you know, a little bit about your 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 role, what you guys do. So I'm going to give you, I listen, folks, this, this show is not just about hearing about some tactics from entrepreneurs, but it's also about creating a community, uh, an entrepreneurial ecosystem. So if folks come on this show and you are interested in their services, please feel free to reach out to me so I can connect you with them or better yet, subscribe to the newsletter on the shades of e.com. So you can have this information, but Casper, tell me who is the, who is the typical customer that you see and, and what, what can they expect? So we see kind of, two customers in what we do at at site where we build the in-house agencies so there are there are two kinds of of of, of reasons to go in-house and one of them is speed so we have some car customers let's say tesla lowers the prices you have to do something react to that fast and and you're not going to do that by calling your agency and they're going to set up a budget and do a plan and something like that. you have to you know you have to be out there later today so that's one reason to bring things in. That's that speed and that agility. The other reason is complexity. So we have customers that are selling. I mean, that was the reason at Maersk and at the Saxo Bank, the financial uh, tech company. You know, you can't call an agency and, and expect them to understand how to to trade futures and options or something like that, or understand <laughs> the the global ecosystem of uh, container uh, shipping and so on and all the different yeah verticals in in that. So so that's the other thing. That's complexity either in in your product. Or in 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 you know let's say markets. So understanding why is this different in 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 the Netherlands or to France, you know all those cultural things to Nigeria or something like that. So so that would be the other reason. If you have a very complex product, you're gonna spend a lot on money on explaining an external agency something, and you risk that they change the team from every time, and you start over and over. And the other one is is speed, and of course you can have partners that are able, you know, that are willing to to drop everything and just work with you as soon as you call. But it 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 is one of the the, the things, and that kind of led me to now that you talked about music because I also used to play um, music. Oh, I saw I still yeah do. the stand up yeah. bass back there. I was yes. Um, and that was kind of one of the things I realized because I always struggled with imposter syndrome and being afraid of not coming up with ideas and so on. Um, I did pretty good, but but every time I got a new brief, I think, okay, maybe this is the last one because you'll never know if, if there's no nothing more in, in you. And then I actually started looking at systems 
and I'm going to tell a story because when I was young, I used to play in a jazz club here in Copenhagen. I'm not that good, but I played with a really good drummer who <laughs> used to play with a lot of, of, of famous, uh, he's, I think he still does, uh, uh, famous bands. And we were just like the backing band sitting in and then really good musicians were coming in, jamming every Thursday night from 11 to 5 a.m. in the morning or something like that. But if you play jazz, you know, there's only like, I don't know, 40, 50 standards that everybody wants to play. Of course, there are more songs, but but basically that's it. And you can probably get along pretty well if you if you know 30 of them by heart, uh, because that's what everybody wants to play. Otherwise, you have like the fake book and you love. And that's basically the same when you do marketing, if if you know how to produce banners, if you know how to do social media, it's more like a method to do this. Uh, and then sometimes you step out of it, but there's, you know, there's the idea in the beginning, the headline, the image or something like that, but, but the rest of it is just work. And if you get that in order, you gain a lot of time. You don't have to come up with a new idea for your social media every morning. You can probably bulk it. You can probably have a bank of ideas of copy that you can use. Um, so, so if you do that every Monday, you will have to, <laughs> you will have for a whole week or two weeks or a month or something like that. So that was kind of the the the, the thing I realized when I switched from the first in house to the next one. Is a lot of this is the same. Probably like eighty or ninety for percent of the of what we do is just methods and frameworks and so on. And then, of course, we add the creativity on on top of that. And then I started looking into, you know, is that framework for creativity? How do you get a great idea or something like? That? How do you come up with an idea? And and I talked to a lot of people, and it's it. Of course, there are you know methods to come up with ideas, or at least methods to to write headlines or something like that. Like the the headline we just mentioned about you know a classroom of kids who loves the statistics. What are the odds? Is pretty much a you know, you take a word from statistics and play around with it and a cloud, you know. So I think a lot of people could come up with a headline like that uh, if they if they keep going. And it's really difficult to get 100 bad ideas in a row. So if, if, if you keep going, you will have something, then you share it among. And, you know, if people, you know, smile or laugh or they even say, oh, what, what about if you did this and that, then you get the something better. So... So, so if if instead of trying to come up with you know sitting down uh, say oh oh we have to post something, uh, then if you actually start planning and 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 saying let's let's just I'm gonna spend two hours now writing a bulk of headlines that I can use later or ideas and just notes and gonna do five images or ten videos at the same time then you will you will get a lot of uh, of ground uh, faster yeah sure. Oh, no, I like it. And you know, one of the things you mentioned was uh, imposter syndrome. I, I think, you know, I, I would say almost everybody uh, at some point has suffered or is going through imposter syndrome. I'm actually doing a, a presentation to the association training and development team. Uh, it's a it's a national conference being held here in Oregon. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually going to be talking about overcoming imposter syndrome. Uh, and one of the things you mentioned is, is, you know, as entrepreneurs, you're going to get a lot of criticism. Uh, even when you don't ask for it, you're going to get opinions. You're going to get thoughts about your products. You post something on social media, you will get thoughts and opinions about your products or service. Uh, you talk about it, you will get thoughts and opinions about your products or service. One way, one thing I tell people, uh, uh, you know, when you're when you're kind of going through that imposter syndrome phase, is understanding that you know you don't need validation from other individuals about your products or service you need it validation from your consumers now with that said it's also important to take constructed feed, uh, criticism uh with a grain of salt um we are the, these individuals these are your consumers so these are people that are going to reach in their pocket and purchase your item right now with that said you don't need their validation uh, to be a good person you know so i just want people to understand you know that going through uh imposter syndrome you don't need validation from others you're doing phenomenal work as it is uh, and the proof is in the pudding that you actually have either a minimal vial product that you're selling or that you have an idea because again there's a lot of people that don't have have not gotten this far maybe they have an idea and they're they're afraid to share it and at least you're willing to share it you know uh, and that's 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 true entrepreneurship. Now you're going to go through these uh, ups and downs. You're going to have people tell you what they think and what they don't think. And I had a conversation the other day about the nonprofit. It's, you know, 
people, everybody has an opinion. Um, whose opinion do we value the most is, is a question that we've been going through because you're not going to please everybody. Uh, but, but again, uh, just know that you, you yourself, everybody, nobody started at the finish line. Everybody started from somewhere. Um, it, fake it till you make it. If you don't, if you don't know something, go to one of those conferences. Hey, if I don't know about podcasting, I started podcasting in my basement. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. YouTube went to conferences, networked, right? Learn it, learn it, fake it till you make it. Nobody knows that you're not a professional podcaster unless you tell them, right? And then that's fine. But there's still, there's a lot of people also out there that are willing to help you learn. Now, now Casper, uh, last question for you. you got to think about the future. How is in-house marketing revolutionizing the business world in the future? What, what can we expect? Uh, so one of the things that we see, of course, I mean, everybody's talking about AI, but it's the tech and, 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 and I don't know, in a, in a year or two, we're not going to talk about AI. It's just going to be in there, in yep. the tech that we use. So, but that's really revolutionizing uh, what, what we are doing. So in terms of, you know, a few years back, you have to do all the banners and video editing, you know, by a video pro program, or you have to send it out to someone who could do it. Now you 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 can do a lot of this yourself uh, in terms of idea creation and doing content. I, I think it's important to know that you, you, to, to, to the point that you still you still need that human extra, but but getting to fifty percent, you know. Asking uh, ChatGPT to brainstorm ideas for headlines based on this one, uh, brainstorm ideas for articles that you can write, you know, what are the main reasons people don't want to buy electric cars, and then you get 10 suggestions for, for articles you can write, blog posts, and so on. So 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 tech is really moving, moving in. Uh, also, th and that gives uh, the ability to act on data. Uh, so when you when you have everything within you 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 produce your your banners and social media posts and and so on, and a lot of TV is actually also now programmatic, which is like a banner in reality. Um, you also get access to that data, and you can you can have a, an idea and a hypothesis, and you can test it maybe for a small audience and say, okay, they this is working, this is not working, and you can you can. You can do faster uh, iterations and and so on. So so I think I think that's really tech moving in as well. Um, um, and then we can see. And then you know we're going to end up pretty soon. Uh, you know, in a sea of sameness because all the AI is teach it's it's taught on the same. So we all get better content, but it get gets a bit boring. Maybe uh, you know. So you still need creativity to stand out, and I think last year or the year before Google, uh, the head of creative at Google were out saying, you know, 80% of the effect of your banners and, and show me posts actually come from the creative idea. You can do a lot with targeting the right people and so on. But if you don't stand out, you can tell the same message. You can spend a lot of money on, on, on reaching the same people all over. But if you do something that stands out, you will actually get more effect out of it. This is, this is very true, folks. You you got to you got to create the differentiator, and I think that goes back to the storytelling piece. To be honest with you, the founder storytelling, the founder storytelling is your differentiator, uh, right? Of why you started the organization. Everybody looks at Nike. Oh, you talk about the the waffle shoes, right? Um, you talk about Starbucks. Oh, his trip out to Milan, Italy, and then he brought back coffee. You know, all of these things have a founder story, which resonates with you. And then, um, you know, to Casper's point, if you're going to be, if you're going to be displaying data at any point in time, you have to make it relevant. You have to make the data relevant. Uh, you can't just say, oh, if 48% of people purchase this. Okay. Well, what does that mean to me? Right. Make it, make it relevant. You know, I tell, I tell this in healthcare often, if I have a provider presenting, okay, you're going to present a bunch of data. I'm going to put a case study. Give me an example of that data. That makes so makes it practical sense. So now I'm like understanding it. So again, folks, a lot of a lot of good information out there, um, a lot of great marketing. So Casper, where where can folks that are interested in you, interested in learning about more about your company, where can they find you online? Well, they can find a uh, they can find me on LinkedIn, uh, which is my first and last name. And since I'm the only one called that, uh, I'm easy to find. 
Um, and then they can reach out to, um, if they want to read about the report, it's actually called the in-house parameter.com and they can see the latest uh, data uh, on where things are going. And they can find our company, it's called a site C dot agency. Um, so, so yeah, and please reach out on LinkedIn and um, I'm, I'll try to, to answer all questions and, and, and so on. I love it. And folks, if, if you forget all of this information and you just... <laughs> logged out the last 30 minutes of this conversation please subscribe to the shades of entrepreneurship newsletter on the shades of e.com we will have the transcription of this conversation as well as a recording and video will be available on youtube of this uh, conversation you can also help support the show for five dollars a month by becoming a patreon member and subscribe to the newsletter so you can stay up to date with all this phenomenal information we'll also create a blog post about this conversation pull out some really good business gems for education purposes that you can find on the website. Uh, Casper, again, thank you so much for calling in there. I know it's very late over there in Copenhagen or, or out in uh, Denmark. Where were you at again? You're you're out there. I'm in, Cop in Copenhagen, okay, Denmark. Yeah, I was going to say, you're out in yeah, Copenhagen. Yeah. You're, you're out. So you're to about nine o'clock right now, folks, They're getting close to nine o'clock in the <laughs> evening for Casper over there. So Casper, again, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to join the show. Um, really cool stuff. And I, again, I agree, folks, in-house, I think I think that's going to be the way it goes um, because AI is moving so quickly, because you want the passion, because you want to be able to tell that founder story. Um, creating in-house is the way to go. But um, as Casper also alluded to, Cost is the number one issue, pro and con. So make sure you do a cost analysis before you decide uh, to do in-house versus uh, external. Uh, again, folks, thank you again for listening to the show. Please subscribe to the Shades of Entrepreneurship on theshadesofe.com. Thank you and have a great night.